Dating back to 1894, Wilhelm Hasse, a German immigrant, began production of a beer he called Siglo XX. Named in celebration for the upcoming 20th century, branding featured two large Roman numeral X's. It eventually became known as Dos Equis, which is Spanish for two X's. Dos Equis Amber is a Vienna-style lager that first hit the United States in 1973. Is the world's most interesting man onto something with this beer? Or are there far more interesting Mexican beers on the market? Find out now on Two Dudes Reviews. What up, guys? Yeah, today we have Dos Equis Amber we're going to break into. Now, I will admit I have never had a Dos Equis before. So, obviously, I am not the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> Far from it. But let's see if the most interesting man in the world's beer selection is actually worthwhile. So I don't know if you actually see him drinking the amber beer in the commercial as well, if it's always just the, uh, the regular one. I don't know, but it's got the dark bottle. That's cool. So let's get into it. First is the smell. You definitely get that, um, the malted barley off the, off the top. Got kind of a, almost a, a dr like a dry plum, not sweet, but you got some of that plumish kind of thing going on. It's it's got some some fruity elements to it, but like not super like bright and like light, like like a, like a lime or lemon or whatever. It's more darker. I'd almost go with like a uh, the uh, plum um, blood orange kind of thing. It's got something just a little like lower key, but still in there. Maybe a bit, very slight woodsy, maybe, but I'm really getting more of the, uh, kind of the, the plummy thing going on. So I think it smells interesting. I'm going to recommend it on the smell. I have no idea what I'm going to get with the taste actually. So let's get into the taste. It actually does have a, like a fruity sweetness to it. And there is kind of like a, a plum flavor to it. I'm, I'm going to stick with the plum. There's a little bit, a little woodsy to it. It's really not much hoppiness at all. Maybe s just a hairline in there a little bit, but not a lot. Um, yeah, very plummy, very, you know, kind of the little woodsy in there. Not much of a bite. There's a little bit like something's kind of being suppressed and it's trying to get out. You know, it's got like fingers through the jail cell, but it's not, it's not really getting out. There's a, you know, just a li little, little bit of, um, you can feel a little bit on your tongue, but really not really. Um, there's not much on there. It's, it's really it's not what I was expecting. When it came with the amber, I was kind of anticipating just your general um, something more like a Bohemia or um, a Negro Modelo or something more along that line. This is not along that line. It, it just, it's definitely sweeter, I feel like, than the other ones that you get. So I'm going to take one more sip of this. Very, very interesting. That is definitely not what I was thinking. It's almost like you took like 
the Vienna style lager that a lot of Mexican places, uh, like Mexican breweries, make, and you throw in a splash of a um, not a saison, but I'm trying, I'm trying to blank on um, a lambic, just a little a splash of a lambic in there because it has that fruitiness of uh, light fruitiness in there that I just was not expecting. I, I don't believe the, um, of course, I have not done the, the video research, which you'll see ahead of time, but I don't believe the amber, the Dos Equis amber is all the, I think it's newer compared to the other, um, other uh, Vienna and Czech style Pilsners and Lagers are, um, yeah, out there. So this, this tastes newer. This tastes like it's been kind of made for a newer palate versus the old ones. The, well, you know, the Bohemias and stuff like that, which those are more just, they're traditional. That's because, you know, they were made by the Europeans that had come over in the late 1800s. So this definitely has, like, the, a, a new age flavor to it. But it's interesting. I'm still going to recommend it on the taste. It's definitely different, and I was not expecting it, but I'm going to recommend the taste. Next is value for price, and to be perfectly honest, I almost... Almost by default, I will recommend any Mexican beer for value of a price because it's always a great buy. You're not paying a lot of money for it, and if you know what you're, if you know what you're going for, if you know a good Mexican beer to get, you're getting a pretty good steal. And so this is not not an exception at all. So it definitely is a good value for price. So I'm gonna recommend it on that. Every time, every time, they got a bug. Next is next is the next is distinction. How distinct is it from other you know Mexican beers out there? And really, it is real distinct. I think it, it is definitely different from your other um, amber, darker style beers from Mexico. This has more of a fruitiness to it that I have not got from your main label Mexican beers. I'm sure there's some microbreweries in Mexico that I just don't have access to in the States that probably are experimenting a little more. But in terms of stuff that's more widely available, this is definitely different. And so definitely for distinction, I'm gonna recommend it on that. Now, drinkability, can I just go through this? Let's, um, let's get another sip going on. Interesting. You know, I'm, I'm drinking it, and um, I kind of feel like after a second one, I'm just gonna be tired of it. Like, like I don't know. Maybe I'll feel a little heavy or something. I don't know. I could definitely drink probably two, maybe more if I felt like it, but. I'm not, in terms of fruitiness, I don't really want a lot of fruitiness going on. That that a lot of times will limit how much I drink. And so maybe they added the fruitiness to kind of, you know, you can still drink when it's hot out. But I think for this, it actually kind of limits my drinkability factor a little bit. So I'm actually going to give it a half on drinkability just because, I just, for me personally, Fruitiness, I'll drink one, maybe two, and it's like, all right, I, too fruity, too fruity. So, but if that, if that, if you like that kind of thing, then, you know, go for it. But for me, I'm going to give it a half. But, all right, next, ca last category is would I buy it again? And, honestly, I think I would. It, it, de it depends on what I'm drinking it with. It's not going to be a thing I, I get all the time. Um... I don't know, maybe I, I might give it a half, actually. I think I'm going to give it a half. Right? Give it a half. Both of you guys can't leave it off. But I think I'll give it a half just because I have to be in the right mood for this. With the, the subtle sweetness that's going on. You know? So, yeah. 
best review, I think. I mean, it's it's a good beer. It's definitely not bad. It's interesting. It's not what I was expecting. So if you've had, you know, the other a lot of other Mexican beers and you haven't had this one before, I think it's going to take you a little bit by surprise for the, the sweetness level that's going on. But if you've had it, let me know. Write it up in the comments. I'd like to know what your uh, opinion is. And you can follow me on Twitter, 2 Dudes Podcast. You can check out my um, podcast. I'll link down there. But for now, for me and those Secchi's Amber, take it easy.